Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today's lecture is wave propagation. So wave propagation for simplified models. What's, what do you mean by simplified models? It's a reservoir, pipeline, valve, and when we call simplified, it means instantaneous valve closures. Sudden means we close it suddenly. No friction, it's ideal flow. Elastic pipe wall, the pipe is elastic here. We take elasticity into consideration, compressible liquid. <clears throat> we consider the water is compressible. So what will happen to the pressure rise due to water hammer? It depends on the wave speed, the velocity of the flow in the pipe, the length of the pipe, and the time taken to close the valve, means the system response here. To, to, to complete this example, we need to, to take a pipe lens L connected to one end from upstream the reservoir and then at the downstream there is a valve here. The reservoir has a water level H, the water height H from the center line of the pipe. We consider the pipeline for simplicity to have no friction, it's ideal flow, F equals zero. <clears throat> At the other end of the pipe, a valve to regulate uh, the flow uh, of water. Pipe flow velocity here is considered ad, as V. Sudden valve closure. What we need to know here is that the kinetic energy of the water, according as soon as we close the valve, the kinetic energy, which is the velocity of the water, initiated by the velocity of the flow of the water, uh, moving through the pipe, is converted to a potential energy stored in the water and the wall of the pipeline through two things, elasticity of water and the elasticity of the pipe. And the elasticity of water, of course, we call it compressibility. So two things will be deformed here due to elasticity. Okay, the water and the wall. Water is compressed, and the pipe material is stretched. This is the two action that will happen and we're gonna study here and to see in the, bar, in the wave propagation. The following figure, we'll see this in the following uh, diagrams which I'm gonna explain this to you right now. Let's assume that, that there is a reservoir here full of water with height H, there is a pipeline, and the, the flow is flowing with velocity V. This is called the hydraulic grade line. It's horizontal because it's a frictionless and ideal flow. This is an assumption. And this is the velocity, which is the value of the velocity. If it is, for example, one meter per second, this is the, the height is, which we call it one meter per second in the flow. This is represent the flow line. So this is at time equal zero, everything is moving. Uh, as normal, suddenly, I mean, it's still no friction. We're still explaining this. This is no friction. Again, this is, happens suddenly, an instantaneous closure of the valve. And instead of it was open, it was closed. It is closed now. Elast elastic pipe wall, compressible liquid, two factor will be considered during our analysis here. Let's let's assume that figure for just uh, explanation. This is the location of the valve. This is the pipeline. And we, we put some elements here as pieces so we can elaborate in, in our description to see what will happen when we close the valve. When we close the valve, there is two things happen, as we said. In the blue line, in the blue color here, the pipe is stretched and the fluid is compressed. Again, this will be moving upstream. The second part, instead of the first part here, there is another part and then it will propagate toward the upstream. So assuming ideal flow, again, we return back to the original situation, assuming that there is an ideal flow, no friction, and the valve was initially open. If we close, suddenly, there is a large force is needed to decelerate the fluid. As you, as you can imagine, there is a 
flow velocity here and to close it suddenly you need to have large raw force to do that and this fluid uh, and this force appeared in the system as pressure because when you close suddenly there is a pressure increase at that location sudden increase in the pressure occurred at the valve location this accompanied with two things as we mentioned earlier stretching in the pipe which is called the bulk bulk means it's a stretching in the pipe diameter and also there is an increase in the density which we call compressibility of the liquid in addition that there is an extra volume of fluid stored in the pipeline due to that increase on the bulk of the pipeline in addition also there is a stretch elongation stretch on the pipeline so two things happen in the pipe first there is increase in the diameter and also increase in the length of the pipe also so if we can see uh, this diagram by, by the propagation of the valve according to that valve closure first the velocity here is equal to zero still the velocity has the same value as before which is v this is the propagation of wave speed indicated by that line with accompanied by increase in the pressure here and also this blue color here indicated that there is a stretch on that pipe uh, section in addition to compressible compressibility happen in the liquid here this will will be the same for all l over a what's what the meaning of l over a l over a l is the length and the a is the wave speed the, the speed here of that wave front will go up to that from the from the downstream valve to the upstream reservoir it will go in a time equal l over a or it will reach the reservoir at time of l over a 2l over a means the reflection time if we go back to the reservoir it will happen in another l over a so it's l over a to that direction 2l over a when we reach back to the valve one more time again this pressure wave propagate upstream at the speed of sound a in the medium at l over a exactly the situation will be like this all pressure will be or the pipe will experience a pressure rise of delta h or h plus hi again all the velocity of the pipe will be zero all the pipe will be stretched all the fluid will be compressed this is the situation at time of l over a exactly fluid accumulate inside the pipeline as we said there is a stretch and there is accumulation inside that pipeline again if we move with time a little bit with x distance for example the wave will go back to the upstream there is a relief backflow will happen toward the tank like this to the backward i mean the velocity will be switched backward this is also will be confirmed through the momentum equation so velocity will be negative means the minus sign here and the wave speed will go to the downstream valve and the pressure will be reduced to be as before as the same h as before so at 2l over a exactly the situation will be first the head will remain the same the velocity is reversed backward and it's, it's a negative sign until it reaches to the valve and the valve stops the relief backflow at that point and then the negative wave is produced in another word on the second stage of after the two after the two l over a here we'll have that situation we'll have a reduction on the pipe diameter we'll have uh, the, the, the fluid would become a zero one more time and then the wave propagate to the reservoir one more time and this will be shown here like that after 3l over 8 means all this will have a negative 
pressure wave and, and the velocity again zero time and then we'll have a relief flow from the tank one more time and then the tank starts again and the relief from the tank start again to the normal velocity direction which is a positive direction which can be shown here and this will be extended up to the situation of 4L over A. At 4L over A exactly, we'll have the situation exactly similar to what we have started when we started. If pressure is a normal pressure, the velocity, it will be, it was in the same direction, positive direction, and the valve still at, at the situation of the closure situation. If I can, if I can show to you the pressure history at the valve, it will be like this. It will be step-wise diagram. The distance from the time from here to there, it's a 2L over A, and it will be repeated again, another 2L over A. At 4L over A exactly, we will turn back to the original condition, and it will be repeated. As you, you know, it's a frictionless, so there is no decay on the, on the uh, on the pressure head again. This is the situation of the velocity and it shows at the valve all, almost zero except at 2L over A and at 4L over A for just uh, 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 a very quick uh, time which has negative here and positive there. At the same time, if we draw the pressure history at the reservoir, of course the reservoir we will have the same head and increase only at L over A when the pressure reaches the reservoir and it will go in the negative direction at 3L over A and, re and return back to the zero condition again at 4L over A. This is the way we can see it at the, reserve, at the reservoir for the velocity. At any distance, we can draw this draw this diagram at any distance. And this will be an exercise to be done uh, by the students here. Time history of the pressure wave. The time history of the pressure wave for a specific point on the pipe, pipe is a graph that simply shows the relation between the pressure increase, the so delta P, and the time during the propagation of the water hammer pressure. I try to, to elaborate a little bit here. So if you don't understand what we have said previously, this will make it easy for you. Let's assume that there is a reservoir with head again H, the pipeline L, there is a valve here. Let's imitate that the pressure variation at the valve exactly. We can see it step by step according to the, the pressure wave which will initiated by the closure of the valve. You can see any movement here of the pressure wave front here, you can see it in the red color on the upper figure here. If you reach to the reservoir, it will be on the upper figure at 2L over A, you will have an increase of a, of a delta H, for example. If you go back again, still at the, at the valve, this is what we show at the valve. At the valve, we will have still a positive pressure at the valve at that point here. It will continue until we reach 4L over 2A means L over 2A. Okay, I'm, I'm doing this with a fraction of uh, every step here or every pieces of the diagram here is considered as L over 2A. Again, at L over 2A here, you will have a negative wave initiated and then it will be shown in the upper figure like this. So at 4L over A or 8L over 2A it's the same we'll reach back to the original situation one more time. If we look to the pressure variation near the reservoir if we imagine that we are get a, getting a closer look at the reservoir. This is what we have seen as a pressure rise here. The pressure remain constant as a reservoir head until we reach the L over A. And then 
will experience an increase in the pressure at that moment and then return back to the original head after that. This is the way we can see it for all the scenario here. Okay. So as we go near, there is the source of the disturbance, which is a valve. The pressure values are either above or below the normal pressure most of the time. It's either with increased pressure with delta H or with negative delta H. Here. If we, on the contrary, as we go near to the source, which is the tank, the pressure is normally normal level most of the time, as you can see in the lower diagram here. This is the summary I, I show it to you in, in the, two, the two slide here in all the steps. Again, this is similar to what we have explained, but in, in, in a two slide only. This is an, this is an, a, a start of initiation at a valve closure, the increase of the pressure. It goes to up at L over A preach the reservoir, at L over A plus delta epsilon like here. If it reached to 2L over 8, return back to the original situation, except that the velocity is negative. It returned back with negative wave here and continue with the negative wave until it's 3L over 8. And then at 4L over 8, we return back to the original situation. This is what we have seen at the diagram of pressure history, pressure variation over time. Pressure variation at time, velocity hit, and the friction losses are, uh, are neglected here. Pressure wave damping the amplitude through the friction. Pressure wave uh, propagation with, with, with wave velocity. If the valve closure time is smaller than the run time of the wave uh, to reflect point and back surge, this is called Jacquesk pressure. So if it is less than 2L over A, if the closer, closure of the valve less than 2L over A, we consider this rapid closure, and this is the pressure here, our increase of the pressure here, we consider it as the Joukowsky surge. In real practice, the fraction effect are considered enhanced damping effect occurs and the pressure wave dies out. Normally, you can see that diagram where the pressure had dying out with time. This is due to the effect of energy dissipation or the friction of the system. More advanced on that topic, if you look to the steady friction or unsteady friction or friction dependent, frequency dependent friction for the unsteady state, this is a, 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 a research which can show and imitate the actual situation in the unsteady friction. We can be so closely to the damping effect of real life in the green, in the green color here, we can see the unsteady uh, state effect of the friction, which we call it frequency dependent friction here. In the long pipeline, in the order of 10,000, uh, uh, several mile, I mean, in the 100 kilometer, in the order of 100 kilometer or 200 kilometer, this is the long oil pipeline. It is something called the potential surge here and the line packing and the attenuation. The potential surge is the things which we learned earlier about the Joukowsky, which is this part of, uh, uh, of the head here. In fact, the, 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 the locus of the pressure rise wave front, this is the dotted line represent the wave front here. You can imagine that the potential surge here, it's here is less and here's a little bit less and it's dying out until it reached to the original here. But the problem here is that it is not only the potential surge which happened. It's another thing is called line packing. The line packing to understand that you can imagine if we can imagine an open channel with a gate closure there. If you can imagine the sloping down ch open channel and with a great gate closure you can see the water level rising up and up and up again with stored things. So this is what we considered the line packing here. This is the time in minutes 
one, two, three, four, five, six. You can, you can see that the pressure is rising up, attenuation. More explanation here you can find in, in Chaudhry, uh, book and chapter seven. This is a, a detail if anybody is working with several mile, like 100 mile, 200 mile, uh, la, long pipeline. As I can imagine that most of your work would be in the transmission line or in the uh, force main and the sewage line in the order of kilometer, 10 kilometer, 20 kilometer, you will not experience that. If you, if you in any, by any chance, you are working with a very long pipeline and experience a valve closure, make sure that you consider that not only the Joukowsky pressure will appear or the potential surge will appear, you will find much more uh, high than the pressure and valve closure has to be taken seriously. And the time will be very large to accommodate for that high pressure. If you have a short pipeline, you don't have any problem here. You have a valve and you have an increase in the pressure. This will propagate upstream back and forth the normal way of life. If you have a valve in the middle, you will have upstream pressure propagating upstream and downstream pressure wave negative propagating to the downstream reservoir. This is the normal procedure for the short pipeline without line packing or attenuation here. Hammer project. And, 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 uh, to, to complete our, our, our lecture here, we need to have an exercise and to solve this with Hammer Bentley. And the objective here is to set up the program and to know the, to, to, to deal with the different scenario and alternative with a different type of control valve and prepare output result, figure, graphs, animation, and text report. And this will be explained clearly in the, in the tutorial part. And the way we are gonna approach that, in the problem, problem statement, we have a valve closure. This is a tank, it's 100 meters high, from 200 to 300, the pipeline, it's a lens, uh, 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 it's, it's explained here in the table. Diameter 300 millimeters, horizontal, and the thickness three millimeter pipe. PVC, it's 16 millimeter. So we we put different pipe material, different lenses, different valve, and we can imagine that we're gonna solve this into two group. Group number one, which can solve different pipe lens, different pipe material, in addition to the frictionless part, and this is in a one case which is called sudden closure case. So in the sudden closure case, you have one, two, three, four situation. In group B, you're gonna take only the ductile iron pipe and you're gonna close it in a 60 second linearly. You're gonna use two valve, gate valve and butterfly valve. Hope you can enjoy the, this exercise and succeed in doing that. Thank you.